Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can effectively fix the performance of your dictionaries in C-Sharp and in some cases double it. Dictionary is one of the most used data structures in C-Sharp alongside lists and arrays and because it's used so much, by doing this you can heavily improve the performance of your application which is something that Microsoft behind the scenes has been doing in .NET itself to improve its performance. So let's see what I have here. I have a program.cs and we have a dictionary which has an integer as a key and a string as a value. Now the dictionary is a hash table in C sharp, meaning that the key is coming in. If it's a reference type, we generate a hash out of it. If it's a value type, then we use the value itself. There can only be one key per value. And then we have another value matching that original value. So if I search for this random number over here, I'm going to get this string. Now, the benefit of using a dictionary is that when you are adding something, updating, deleting, or retrieving something, the time complexity of doing this operation is 01, meaning it's constant time. So in sessions will be effectively constant, same with retrievals, deletions, updates, and so on. But here's the problem with C Sharp's implementation, and that's specific to dictionary. Other types of dictionaries like concurrent dictionary kind of solve this problem, but the vanilla dictionary still has it. If I go and I say that, hey, I want to only add a value in this dictionary and enter in this dictionary if it doesn't exist anymore. So I can say, for example, values.contains key. So does it contain the key of this random number? If it doesn't contain it, then go ahead and set the key to this number and then the value to this value. And if I do that, then this all works. But you need to understand what's going on here and why this is a problem. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that I'm running two online workshops at the end of February. Link in the description. The first 20 of you that get tickets can get 20% off using discount code WORKSHOP20. There's some awesome two-day workshops about testing and then about building distributed systems with .NET Aspire, so you don't want to miss them. These are normally what I run in conferences around the world, but this time I'm running them online. I'll be there for two days teaching you everything you need to know about these two topics. Now back to the video. Here we have the operation to check if the key exists, so we basically take that value and then the dictionary hashes it and tries to see if the key exists to see if it's in the dictionary and if we want to add it or not. And then when we set it again, we have the same hashing operation. So ultimately what's happening is we spend time searching if the key exists or at least setting the key twice. Now there's one way to implement this. There's another way where you use the try get value method where you use the key that you want, then you out var the value. And then if it doesn't exist, if it couldn't get it, then it wasn't in there. And then you set the value instead. But both of these things, suffer from the same issue. You have to first read to see if the key exists in the dictionary and then calculate the hash again when you insert it to make that operation. And as you can see over here, there is no get or add method in that dictionary. Yes, the concurrent dictionary, I'm pretty sure, does have that. So if I say concurrent dictionary and then get or add, then we do have a method that does it, but there's no such thing here. Yes, there's a try add method, and that was a suggestion of the contains key method we had before, but we don't have a get or add method, which, which is very common to use, and you see it all over the place in other dictionaries and caching frameworks. So can we add this method ourselves? Well, of course. I have this dictionary extensions class over here, and we could go ahead and make something like this. We have a get or add, we have a non-null key over here, we say try get the value and then set it and return it. But this suffers from the same problem as before, we just wrapped it into a method. Basically, we access that dictionary twice to make this operation. Can we access it only once? Well, we can, and it works something like this. First, you want to get a ref var of that dictionary value, and you want to say ref collections marshal, a great class that has some amazing methods for performance. And then you want to say get value ref or add default. Then we pass down the dictionary, we pass down the key, and then we say out var exists. And that's enough for us to do a very efficient operation on that dictionary to get the value of reference of that key or the value matching that key or adding the default value for the type of this dictionary. In this case, it's generic, so T value and checking if it exists or not. So ultimately we get this back and we say that if that value existed, then return 
that value. Now, the reason why we have a warning here is because this can be null. Depending on whether your type is nullable or not, you might want to add something like this here and something like this as well. And that's completely up to you. But now, because we have the reference over here, we don't have to go and access the dictionary again. Instead, what we have to do is say the value that reference equals to the default value passed down by the method and then return that value. And that is it. So in this process, we only access the dictionary once over here, once to check if it exists. And if it doesn't exist, then we add the default value. And because we have the reference of that default value, then we can set that value. Meaning that if I was to rewrite this, it would now look something like this. I would say values dot add or default. Oh, and in fact, I have to make sure that this is get or add over here. So I have a dictionary, I have the key down, which in this case is this random number over here. And then the default value I would want to have if it doesn't exist is this one. So basically what's happening, I'm going to go ahead and get it. So val equals this. So if I was to say console dot right line and I pass down that value, then as you'd expect, I am going to get what's read in here. Now, I want to point out that if this was a different value, it doesn't actually affect it in any way because we already had that value here. But if I was to go ahead and say add a new value that didn't exist, then yes, it will be retrieved and added. And by the end of this, I would have a JSON serializer dot serialize those values. And as you can see, I would have both values in that dictionary in a very, very efficient way. This would literally double the performance of this operation on your code base. Now, I want to point out that this is a very efficient operation by default. So it's not going to be milliseconds of difference. It's going to be nanoseconds. But if you use enough dictionaries and you have it in many hot paths, then this would benefit you. There's actually another very interesting method that you should know about and ultimately you should implement because this is for get or add, but what if you want to have a try update method? Well, there is a collection marshal method you can use for that. So here's the method we want to implement, try update key value, then we have the dictionary as an extension method on that dictionary, and then the key and the value. So you want to try to update the value of that key. Now we're not going to use the exact same method. We're actually going to say ref var val equals ref collection marshal dot get value ref or null ref because we don't want to add a default value if the thing doesn't exist right so we're gonna say here's the dictionary and here is the key and that's about it i'm not passing down any value and on the way back as you can see in the documentation just return a reference null if the value doesn't exist or if the key doesn't exist in the dictionary and that is it now how you can check for that because you don't really say if val is null over here Instead, what you say is if unsafe is null ref, and you have the ref of the val, then return false because you couldn't update it because it didn't exist. Otherwise, val equals value return true. So we did update it. We found out that it existed, and then we set the value and returned. And then you can go ahead and use it as an extension method for your dictionary and happy days. Here we go. Try you know, you have your try, add, try, get value. Now you also have try, update. In my opinion, these should be two methods you absolutely have and use in your code base. In general, be careful with whatever unsafe. I have a separate video on talking about unsafe stuff. And let me know if you want a video on more unsafe stuff because they're used quite a bit in .NET, but you do have to be a bit careful in some cases. But in general, this can greatly improve the performance of your application and your dictionary uses in C Sharp. But now one from you. Do you use any collection marshal methods and what's your favorite one? Because I know mine is as span over here, but which one? is yours. Leave a comment down below, let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.